Football is back, folks. Uh, yes, that's how I want to start. Football is back. I'm Narayat Chavik. Football back. We're heading to Brazil. Green Bay Packers. Football's back. Did I mention football's back? Maybe I should start with Wait. Are you telling me that football is back? Football is back, Christian, and we are going to talk all about it. Week one of the NFL season is about to kick off. I'm Narayat Chapik. That's Christian Ferguson. Let's we are hosts of Portland Let's Packers go. podcast. Let's go. Grab yourself a drink. It's time to pour ourselves another Packers podcast. This uh, this big juicy bear beer hug, bear hug, like beer hug. Got it. It's uh, I believe it's like nine point four percent alcohol for a beer. You know, I thought it, I was thinking that we should probably, like, you could definitely fit a shelf behind you. I could probably get a shelf back here of the different well, types of beers right that we here. drink. Well, I, you can maybe a standing shelf. You can get a standing yeah. shelf behind you. Yeah. I could take that down and just use the window. Well, let's talk about some Packers football. I mean, let's I, do it. We got a little bit of a loose script here. We're not really sure how we want to do our entire regular season weekly shows or whatnot. We do know that there is going to be an overtime episode. This episode specifically will be catered only to the matchup, the week one matchup, and then we'll do that week after week. So it'll be like maybe, hopefully, we're going to find out 20 to 30 minutes where you can capture all of your knowledge and insight and things that we are watching and score predictions. And then we'll kick to an overtime episode later on the second half where we'll talk all about the NFL, different matchups, some different games throughout the league, do some power rankings. If you want to hear any of that stuff, we'll do maybe some prize picks guests because I haven't done any of that. Have you done any prize pick stuff? Okay, you're good. Oh, yeah. You got that oh, one yeah. down? I'm right. so ready, bro. I'm Perfect. so ready. I had two fantasy drafts this last weekend. And let's see. I've set, I think, three different prize picks lineups. Uh, I made some showdown lineups in DraftKings for the uh, Thursday night game. So I'm uh, I'm rearing to go with the fan with the fantasy stuff and the sports betting. Love well, it. we'll get to that. We're going to get to that in the overtime section. This first half is dedicated specifically to the week one matchup. Green Bay, Philadelphia Eagles, they're both heading down to Brazil for, I would arguably say, the most anticipated game of the weekend. Yes, Thursday night's kickoff with the Chiefs and the Ravens is going to be a great game, but there's a lot of talk. First time the NFL has ever gone to Brazil. First time the NFL has ever had a Friday night football game. And you have two really high-profile teams that, both had very similar yet different seasons last year. Kind of looking back on the history, this will be the 47th time the Packers and the Eagles have faced off, which is surprising. This goes all the way back to 1933. The Packers do own the series 28 to 18, and their last matchup actually came in November of 2022, where Rodgers went out in the fourth quarter. Packers were down by 14. Jordan Love gets his first opportunity out on the field. Go out there and play some football. He throws like a 60-yard pass to Christian Watson. They made a little bit of a run of it towards the end of it. But when I say Green Bay Packers, Philadelphia Eagles, there's one game that comes to mind for me. There's one memory that comes to mind for me. You might have seen my notes, but is there anything else that comes to mind when you hear the Packers versus Eagles? Well, yeah, I saw your notes, and I was kind of trying to rack my brain for a game similar to that. And honestly, the one that I was going to comment on was the 2022 game where okay. Jordan Love came in Go with an injured Rodgers. Well, I mean, we've talked about my love for Jordan Love since before he was drafted. I've been a big fan of his, and I was excited for him to get his first opportunity to see what he could do coming in with an injured Rodgers. I was hoping to silence a lot of the haters with his performance there, which Honestly, he played fairly he f played fairly well. He didn't complete the comeback, but no. I mean, he got him closer. He got him within a touchdown and then, you know, they both teams kind of fizzled out at the I think it was in the fourth quarter. It was only field goals that were scored. So, the game kind of fizzled out in the end, but Packers Eagles made me think of that the first uh one of the first times we got to see Jordan Love. 
Uh, but some other things that that popped into my mind thinking Packers and Eagles is the the connections, uh, specifically coaching connections that are there. So back in the let's see, you're talking about the back in Nam. 04 game, right? Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, I want to. I want. I mean, any Packers fan out there, I can say fourth and twenty six, and that's twenty years ago. Two thousand four was twenty Jeez. years ago. Yeah, if you don't feel old, I'm now so you old. do. Uh, Packers led seventeen fourteen with a minute twelve left in the game. Uh, fourth and twenty six. This was the divisional playoff game. Uh, we thought there's no way that they're going to pick this up. Game would be over. They complete a 28 yard pass from Donovan McNabb to Freddie Mitchell. That goes to a, a game tying field goal. And then, of course, Brett Favre, known for one thing more than anything else. I mean, two things. He's known for two things, I'll say. Maybe three things. I'll say he's known for three things. <laughs> one, he's got a cannon of an arm, right? I'll give him that one. He's like the iron giant as far as he doesn't miss games. He was always like playing through injuries. And then the third thing is probably the least favorable. The guy throws interceptions when it matters the most. So sure enough, he throws well, an interception. I don't know if that's the least favorable, favorable thing that Brett Favre has known. <laughs> okay, ever. good point. Like, well, we won't go into the outside. Yeah, we don't have to talk about field. it, but most Packer fans know what we're talking about here. Yes. Yeah, so Favre throws an interception in overtime. <laughs> Philadelphia kicks it a field goal and they go on and uh, to lose in the NFC championship game. But nonetheless, that fourth and 26, I remember where I was. I remember the moment. Uh, I mean, there's. There's a lot of heartache that has come. I mean, we're fortunate enough to be Packers fans where we have heartache in playoff games because that means that we're actually making it to the playoffs. But there's that, that's got to be like a top five moment, that heartbreaking loss <laughs> for me. But. They've only played I'm 47 sure or 46 games up to this point, which is shocking. I feel like they would have met up more throughout the last 90 years of football games. But that's this This is set up to be another good one. But where are you going to go with your other memory? Well, so that that kind of connects to my point. I believe in 2004, Andy Reid was the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. And Andy Reid comes from the Green Bay Packers coaching tree. He was an assistant coach the year they won the Super Bowl with Brett Favre. So Andy Reid goes to the Eagles, eventually becomes the head coach, becomes very successful. And obviously he's continued to be very successful. Another coach that had another Eagles head coach that had connections to the Packers was Doug Peterson. He Doug Peterson was the oh, yeah. head coach in the Eagles most recent Super Bowl win. Correct. So so had, that's what came to my mind when thinking Packers and Eagles. They've had some coaching connections. Coaches seem to develop in Green Bay and then go to the Eagles and have some success. So, well, that was another thing I thought of. No, it's, and that's, yeah, there's definitely connections like that across the NFL. I mean, that like 92 to 97 Packers coaching tree just was filled with talent. It probably goes back to earlier than 92. Like you had your Steve Mariucci's in there. You had John Gruden who came out of Green Bay. Andy Reid, as you mentioned before, I mean, there's a lot of talent. That's spread across. I the think entire... I saw it wasn't too long ago. I saw a picture of the I think it was the 92 Packers coaching staff. And it had arrows pointing to each almost every single coach and was saying this coach is now head coach here. This coach is now a defensive coordinator here. And it was just showing how crazy that coaching staff was and how it spread across the NFL. And they've had success other places, too. Yeah, we were just babies back then. If you don't feel right. old now, you really feel. <laughs> I was yeah, like, but... I, let's see, I was two, two yeah. years old, probably <laughs> not even two. That's crazy. So outside of the history of the Packers, I mean, looking forward to this matchup where I put a kind of a headline of where are both teams heading into this game. And week one is probably the toughest one to gauge out of all these matchups that we're going to do throughout the year, because I think, you know, week two, week three, we could kind of look back. Here's how they did last week or here's how they've done so mm -hmm. far this season. We really have no idea what we have going into this game. I've seen a number of expert predictions come out over the last few days. It's favoring a little bit more Eagles. Uh, the most recent statistic is that 59% is leaning towards Eagles. But you really have no idea what's going on in, the, in this matchup as far as who really is the better team. Because it's week one. It's new teams. It's new players. It's new coordinators. Eagles are coming off of like one of the highest of high 2023 seasons and the lowest of lows. They started 10 and 1 to start 
the year in 2023 and then finished one and five and got their asses handed to them by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nine to 32 in the wild card game. New defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio, new offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore. Pangio spent some time uh, with the Bears, so that'd be a familiar name. He was the defensive coordinator in Chicago, went out to Denver and was the head coach for a little time there. They, he failed miserably as the head coach, spent a year in Miami as defensive coordinator out there, and now he finds himself in Philadelphia. And then as far as uh, Kellen Moore goes, I, I don't know. He's the offensive coordinator with the Cowboys for the from 19 to 21, was out in uh, the Chargers last season as an offensive coordinator. They're kind of piecing their coaching staff back together. There's been a lot of rumblings about the relationship between the head coach and Jalen Hurge. Was it Sirianni, I believe is his name. I'll use names in this podcast. There's a lot of moving pieces for a week one matchup where starters have not played at all in the preseason. They're trying to figure out their identity. And I'm not, I mean, we're, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of rust in this Philadelphia's team outside of the coaching staff, a ton of new off season additions. We can run through them if you want to, but you've been kind of holding back, or at least I've been making you hold back on this Philadelphia Eagles team throughout the last couple episodes. You, what are your thoughts? What are you excited about? Or what, I guess if you can get excited about a different team, what has you, I guess, interested or intrigued by this Philadelphia Eagles team? Yeah. I mean, Overall, I guess overall, the team is very similar to the to what they were last year. And you even pointed out they started out the season ten and one last year. They always start. I don't hot, know. Though. Right, they do start hot, but ten and one. I mean, that's eleven games into the season. Yeah, and they were but nine and one <laughs> also when Jordan Love went to the game and tried to mount a comeback. Right, so they always seem to be a hot sure. start team, and yeah, kind of flounder towards the end. But go ahead. Sure. I wouldn't disagree with that outside outside of the years that they've made it to the Super Bowl. But yeah, anyway, this team is it's very similar to what it was last year and the year before. It's been a very uh, consistent offense, at least the talent that they have at multiple positions is what makes me nervous for a matchup with the Packers. So you got Jalen Hurts, who is one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now. His rushing ability is ridiculous. And actually talking about that 2022 game where Love came in. Yeah. The big reason why the Eagles won that game was because Jalen Hurts had 157 rushing yards. So his yeah. dual threat ability is scary. And then their top wide receivers, A.J. Brown and. Uh, oh, man, why am I blanking on his name right now? Devontae. Yeah. Parker. Devontae, Devontae Smith. Smith. But they also have Devontae, Devontae Parker. Yeah, Devontae Parker. Yeah, he's Parker's yeah, been he's around the league for a little man. while. He's I don't know. He's a little washed up in my opinion, but <laughs> but yeah. So you've got Jalen Hurts, two stud wide receivers, and then you throw in Saquon Barkley to this offense. Like there's a lot of people that are saying Saquon Barkley's washed up. He doesn't have it anymore. I don't believe that for a second. I think he was in a bad situation in New York. Just go, that team wasn't really going anywhere. And now being with a new team and one of the best offensive lines in the league, I think Saquon Barkley is going to be scary good this year. He's actually one that I've targeted a lot in some of my fantasy leagues as top one or two round, first or second round pick. Over um, Jacobs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? In, in most leagues, yeah, he goes before Jacobs. Jacobs has gotten a lot of flack, a lot of uh, negative negative press, I guess, if you can say it that way, as far as fantasy goes, because there's a lot of people saying that, saying similar things, saying that he's washed up and look at the abysmal season he had last year, which we've talked about it before. I disagree with that. Um, but even so, I still think Saquon Barkley, I still think Barkley has a better year than Jacobs. I, I feel hope, like it's but, just more of the same when it comes to just let's fly under the radar. You know, like yeah. you're going to doubt Josh Jacobs running ability. He had one down year and that team was a fucking dumpster fire last year. Yeah. So you're going to tell yeah. me that he's 26. He's not past his right. prime. I no, would argue that I he's agree. entering his prime. Right. And I'm not arguing with you. I'm arguing with the yeah, general. You're saying everybody right? else. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. I don't understand how he's flying so far under the radar when he's coming into yeah. an offense that 
is a in theory is a better not only offensive line but more weapons and more of an offense mm-hmm. around him. You, we've talked in the past, and we're gonna just let's just go into it again. You can't if you want to decide if you want to focus your attention on stopping the run, and that's Josh Jacobs. And that's just gonna open up your tight ends and your wide receivers and the plethora of options at wide receiver. It's a catch twenty two one way or the other. I don't know how. And we're this is probably one of the more exciting things that we're going to start to see finally in regular season and watch it develop. Vic Fangio, a, I don't really think he's that good of a defensive coordinator. He's one of those flashy names. He might have, you know, I think he had his prime, but he's kind of come down as far as uh, his ability to build defenses and make it count. I think he's got the name. I don't think he necessarily has the results to to go hand in hand with it. So, whether it was Aaron Rodgers that specifically put Vic Fangio on the chopping block and made him lose his job in Chicago. That's a very high possibility, but I think he's going to have his hands absolutely full trying to figure out what we have or what they need to do to stop this offense. And I feel like I'm going to get scatterbrained Jane because there's just so much to talk about, but the Packers are packing some, sort. no pun intended. They have, they got some cards close to their chest right now, as far as what they're going to unleash on Friday night, listen to the Fleur interviews and just any of the coaches like, there's there's a certain level of confidence buried underneath of like short answers and we have a plan and our number one focus down in Brazil is the football game. I don't care about anything else. It's about beating the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a tale of two cities, but I don't know where the hell I'm going with it, but there's because there's just so much to talk about here. <laughs> it started with the whole Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley thing. I guess if you want to put a, a pin on it, If you were building an actual roster, not a fantasy team, which can get confusing, who would you take? Would you want Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley? Because they've both kind of been trending downward the last few seasons. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna who's most likely to have the resurgence in 2024? Sounds Mm. like it's gonna be Saquon. Yeah, I mean, my my mind right now says Saquon. My heart says Jacobs, my mind says Saquon. Right. Man's telling but, me no. <laughs> but he, uh, here's one thing, one caveat to that. So Saquon Barkley's value, a, a big part of his value is his pass catching ability and his involvement in the passing game. Josh Jacobs hasn't been known for his pass, pass game, pass catching ability in the past. He hasn't been known for that. But Throughout training camp and throughout the offseason, there have been lots of things coming out of Packers camp that coaches and other players have been saying he can run any route that the wide receivers can run. He could, He's a pass catching back. So if he adds that aspect to his game, which he hasn't really in the past, if he adds that aspect to his game, the sky's the limit for Josh Jacobs. I mean, obviously, we know he can run between the tackles. But if he if he puts up bigger numbers out of the, catching the ball out of the backfield, he could I mean, he could run away with it if we're talking a competition between him and Saquon Barkley. So. So, so outside of Vic Fangio, what, I guess, what are your thoughts on their offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore? I mean, he. It felt like he had like glimpses of like Wonder Boy offensive, young offensive coordinator possibilities when he was at, at Dallas. I actually completely forgot that he left Dallas and went to the, the Chargers last season. Yeah, I'm, I must have been on my own planet last year. So now he comes to Philadelphia. Is that I mean, there's just a lot. They're structuring a whole new defense. They're structuring a whole new offense. I think we're banking on the idea that this is the same Philadelphia Eagles team of last year that started. 10 and one they add new uh additions such as saquon barkley that we talked about devin white from tampa bay uh Devontae parker from new england who we agree is washed up uh defensive back cj gardner johnson from detroit probably the more intriguing thing is that they have two draft picks <clears throat> that the packers were expected to be in the hunt for as far as quinion or Q- quinion is that right mitchell from toledo QAnon? No, QAnon. yeah it's QAnon. <laughs> Yes, I believe it's Quinion Mitchell, number 22 overall. He went in the draft. And then, of course, the darling that is Cooper DeGene. Both of these defensive backs start are going to be presumably starters uh, amongst uh, or alongside Darius Slay out there in uh, Philadelphia. I don't know about DeJon. You don't think so, huh? He, 
I I saw, I mean, I haven't paid super close attention to it, but I saw an article come out that according to PFF, Pro Football Focus, Cooper DeJean was the lowest graded eagle on the entire team throughout the preseason. So he's had some struggles throughout the preseason. For all, so I don't see him being a starter right now. Packers Nation went crazy when Cooper DeJean did not get drafted. So that would be, I mean, a blessing in disguise if it doesn't uh, doesn't pan out. Probably one of the bigger. We you, you talked about the offensive line that Saquon has to run behind. Jason Kelsey has to come up. He's retired now. He, mm-hmm. he was one of the stud uh, offensive linemen centers for Philadelphia Eagles. Probably the main contributor. I watched a shit ton of highlights on him in the last 24, 48 hours of how quick he was and was able to get downfield to make blocks. Talking about the Philly, uh, not the Philly special, what the, the shove. Tush push, the really tush, push. tush push. Yep, kind of a huge proponent of the success that they've had with the tush mm-hmm. push. I don't know. I the more Did you ever I watched the in, Kelsey documentary, I know I didn't. It was damn good. That, was that on Amazon? Damn good or something? Yeah, like that? it's yeah. on Amazon. It's watching it. I didn't know a whole lot about a J- about Jason Kelsey before that, but watching that documentary made me a huge Jason Kelsey fan. He's a pretty awesome guy and I don't a solid doubt it. player. Kind of like Caleb Williams, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, the more I dove into this roster, this team, so much stake is getting put on the 22 Philadelphia Eagles that started nine and or 10 and one. <laughs> and then you look at the 23 Eagles that were 10 and one. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't believe this is the same Eagles team. Yes, it's littered with talent, but I don't know if they're going to be as hot out of the gate in week one, two, and three as maybe the Green Bay Packers are, who are not only returning the core of their roster, but are coming off of a hot end of the 23 season, a, a sour taste of losing to San Francisco in the divisional round. And it, very similar as how the Eagles started hot and then kind of pitter-pattered towards the end. The Packers are the exact 180. They started the season 3-6, and six, finished 6-2, six and two, lost to San Francisco, and pretty much up until four minutes left in that game, probably should have won that game against San Francisco. I, you made your preseason picks of this game, and we're going to get into score predictions. But I'm not as convinced in this specific game that the Packers are not going to win this game. And I can kind of transition in, into some of the other points and in, in, that I have written down, but they're heading to Brazil. Philadelphia, this is their home game. This is one of their home games, and they have to go to Brazil. And there are a ton of Packers fans in Brazil. In fact, there are 38 million American football fans in Brazil and 4.8 million Packers fans. There are 5.7 million Wisconsin residents. So almost the entire state of Wisconsin consumes Brazil, the country of Brazil. You couldn't ask for a more of a layup for the Packers to have an away game in a country and an environment and a stadium and just a coliseum. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't find it. But a moment for the Packers to go on the road and face off against a, a, a good opponent, I I think I'm leaning towards the Packers. I'm leaning towards the Packers. I just, regardless of the talent, regardless of the depth chart, I just think Philadelphia has a lot to figure out with their new additions and their coordinators and, and everything on that roster. Yeah. yeah, I can agree with that. And, I mean, keep in mind, this the season predictions that we made, I was totally flying hey, off the stop. cuff. I you can change your answer tonight, okay? You don't have to keep defending yourself. I, I, I and it's fine. I Whatever feel... you say is perfectly fine. There's there's seventeen. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, seventeen other opportunities moving forward. Just don't worry about. It. Don't worry <laughs> about it. No, I uh, I agree with you. With all the coaching changes, there is definitely going to be some growing pains for the Eagles. None of their starters played in the preseason. There's going to be some rust. I think the talent, as far as the offensive side of the ball, the talent that the Eagles have on offense, yeah, they'll probably have some rust maybe the first couple of drives, but I think because of the talent that they have, they shake it off a lot faster than some other players. The defense, though, the defense is where the defense is where the Eagles have struggled, right. especially their past defense, and that's kind of what killed them last season was their pass defense. I actually looked up some stats. Last year, the Eagles' pass defense was only better than the Washington Commanders 
as far as passing yards per game. Uh, the Eagles allowed 252.7 passing yards per game and a total of 35 passing TDs last year. So I know they've made some changes in their past defense, but are those changes going to fix the issue? Is the new defensive coordinator going to fix the issue? I don't know that those things fix it right away. The defense is where the Packers can take advantage. The Packers defense. The Eagles defense is, you know, where the Packers can take advantage is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Did no, I say I'm it the other way around. No, you're good. I'm just clarifying because, you know, you yes. had a little mini stroke there. So I just wanted to clarify a little me. bit. <laughs> I need. And that's I a huge this part of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a huge part of it, though, right? I mean, we're talking about this offense that you, you got $220 million Jordan Love who came off the just super hot at the end. of the, the season did not end right. Weapons galore. Christian Watson, healthy, new running back. I mean, I that defense is going to have a lot of problems, I think, trying to figure out how to stop this offense. And what I was getting to with that Brazil thing is that the Packers are essentially coming into a home game atmosphere. There, there. I would not be surprised when we turn on the TV, seven fifteen Central Time. That stadium is eighty percent, if not closer to ninety percent, Packers fans and Eagles fans. Packers fans travel. I'm not putting anything. I mean, Eagles fans are bloody, like bloodthirst monsters in the best of ways. But Packers fans travel. They and and that is a home game for Green Bay. And I expect. Is it a seven fifteen kickoff? It is. Yeah. I thought I saw, I was watching, uh, Jordan Love had a uh, locker room interview yes, uh, the other day, and they asked him a question about the start time, and they said something about it being an hour later. It's still 7.15 here, though? It's 7.15 here, so it's probably 8.15 okay. in Sao Paulo. No, they said it was 9.15 in Brazil. Hope not. Well, actually, I hope I do. I have to work on Friday. Anyway, let's get to well, we can circle back around to a lot of these topics. I want to talk about the injury report real quick. At, at at first, when I brought it up on Tuesday, I thought that we were Gucci. And man, I feel old even saying that word, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the recording. This episode's all about do you feel old yet? Perfect. Monday, all 53 players practice for the Green Bay Packers, and I'm like, this is great. We're full strength. What you couldn't ask for a better result. Well, the official injury report came out on Tuesday. Couple of familiar names for the Packers. Marshawn Lloyd did not practice. Now that is not concerning, I think, to the most part. It was planned that way. He had two consecutive practice days. The anticipation or the expectation is that he will be able to play on Friday night. We'll get to see our first glimpse of him. Edger and Cooper and Valentine and Emmanuel Lu uh, Wilson. Wow, I got to get my words right. All were limited participants. And then probably the name that sticks out the most is Romeo Dobbs. He found his way onto the injury report as a limited participant with a hand injury, not the best type of injury you like to see for a wide receiver. Last year, we started the season without Christian Watson. He did not participate in that opener against the Bears. I don't really know because it's tough to get anything from Matt LaFleur in his press conferences on what to expect Friday night and whether Dobbs will play. If I'm a betting man, I say he's playing. I don't really question that all that much. However, when they asked him, you know, one of the reporters is like, is it a concern that it's a hand injury for a receiver? And LaFleur is like, obviously that, I mean, receivers are taught to catch with their hands, so that would be a concern. For the most part, the injury report, I think, is fine. I think most of these players were just limited participants, and it's better than did not participate or anything like that. Are we going to see yeah, Marshawn Lloyd? Are we going to see Romeo I think a Dobbs? lot of it's just precautionary. It, it could all be mind games, too, quite frankly. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to put it. Past I can see the Packers. that. Well, and Lafleur's comment about when the reporter asked him that question, I feel like that response is more like, "Well, yeah, that's kind of a stupid question. Obviously, he, a hand injury is concerning for a receiver. Like, <laughs> duh." A, I'm seeing a lot more of this. Like Lafleur has a there's a a fire or a spark that's different mm -hmm. this year. I've watched all of his press conferences for the last five years, four or five years, and it's really inter entertaining if you want to, you're not going to, but like his first few years, first year or so, super nervous and like hesitant to say words and a little bit of a Joe Biden stutter, if you will. And then this year, he's like cracking jokes and like being facetious and real tight lipped and 
just not putting up like not quite the Bill Belichick side of the spectrum where he doesn't say a, a damn thing, but that pendulum swinging a little bit where he's, I think he's comfortable. I think he's confident. And I think he's heard the same questions over and over. So he's starting to have a little bit more fun with it, but yeah, I, he's a tough guy to get any information out of these days. And we're going to have to start to resort to like different forms of media to actually get any facts about what's going on in the Packers locker room. Cause LaFleur isn't really helping all that much. As far as the Eagles go, injury report looks relatively clean. Any concern there would maybe be Devin White. He has an ankle concern. He was a limited participant, but the Eagles are going to show up healthy. I think the Packers will show up healthy. I think that's enough we need to spend on the injury report. Weekly headlines. I want to talk about the Packers finding a kicker. We recorded mm -hmm. that video last Tuesday night, the initial roster reaction. And there... <laughs> It didn't take more than 24 hours and more of the picture started to unwind of what we were going to get as far as this roster goes. I'm not going to go through all the different moves that happened, but I do want to talk about kicker, mainly because I think we found our long-term kicker. The Packers pick up uh, Braden Narvison. He was the backup kicker as the Tennessee Titans, so we got our second player from the Tennessee Titans outside of Malik Willis. I really am hearing some good things. There's only been a couple practices. Jair Alexander seems to be a fan of uh Narvison. he actually leaned over to lafleur after some kicks in practice and said that guy knows what he's doing and this guy can kick uh lafleur has confidence in him in his press conference i watched his interview on packers.com he's got a wife whose family grew up in prescott wisconsin homegrown wisconsin people pretty cool background there i am confident that we don't have to worry about kicker anymore and am i crazy for thinking that I think he, I think we found our guy. I do. No, no. I mean, I remember talking about it last week. We, you know, we were worried about what happens if Craig Joseph isn't the guy, you know, we were talking about him being on a short leash. As soon as they saw blood in the water, they were going to go out and find somebody, but well, they didn't even wait for that to happen. No. And we I remember last week we talked about the Atlanta Falcons starting tick kicker, how I believe he was. A similar situation. He was cut from a different team or he was a backup on a different team. Falcons brought him in and he's been their starter, starting kicker for quite a while now. So, so yeah, I'm not hugely surprised that they found a guy. Obviously, what they were seeing out of both kickers that they had during training camp weren't, it wasn't cutting it. So they made a change. Hopefully, this is something different. And it was uh, a, much, a much needed change. Like, we yeah. both agreed that Greg Joseph was no. Like that, that couldn't be it, right? <laughs> and as far as uh, Narvison goes, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. But I'm, from what I've heard, just with his history, is he went five for five on his first day. He's been kicking some fucking bangers from 55 plus yards in practice. I'm confident enough that if we find ourselves in a situation that I'm not going to be as nervous as normal now. Is he going to make kicks, miss kicks throughout the preseason or not the preseason, the regular season? Is he going to miss kicks this year? Absolutely. It's going to happen. I get it. But it seems like we we probably have our long term solution there, which is a real breath of fresh air because you don't need to be missing extra points. You don't need to be you know, having to worry about going for it on the 45 yard line because you don't have a kicker that can make it from 53, 55, whatever that math works out to be. So that's good. Packers got stronger at kicker. We figured out our kicking position. There's talk about the backup quarterback and should we be worried about how little of time Malik Willis has had to prepare? I don't care at all about that. You care about how prepared our backup quarterback is in week one? Okay, perfect. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I don't know why they keep talking about it. I don't really care. Let's talk about yeah. X factors and key matchups. What matchups are you most intrigued about? What players breakout player, X factors. What are you going to be watching or expect to see on Friday night? Yeah, I already kind of hit on it a little bit. What I'm the one thing I'm going to be looking at and one of the key things for the Packers um, victory is going to be that Eagles pass defense against the Green Bay wide receiver core or pass catchers in general. Um, so not necessarily one specific player. Um, but like we talked about before that pass defense for the Eagles has not been good. And we've talked about it a lot, how talented and how versatile the Packers 
pass catchers are going to be this year. So even with those changes that the Eagles have made, I don't know that they have an answer for how many options Jordan Love has to throw to. Uh, The other matchup that is going to be super important is Packers run defense against Saquon Barkley. We've touched on it before on poor another here. (laughs) For years, it feels like the Packers run defense has always been suspect. It's not even feels. They have great. They've been bad. Our run defense has been bad. So with a new defensive coordinator, a new scheme, some new faces on that defense, can the Packers run defense stifle Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts for that matter? I mean, we talked about how in 22, Jalen Hurts ran for 157 yards. You got to stop that. You can't let that happen. So run defense for the Packers is going to be a huge part of this game. If they can stop the run, the Packers pass defense, their defensive secondary is pretty solid, even with the new additions. So I'm not as concerned about that. Yeah, the Eagles have some talent in their passing game, but so the Packers have a lot of talent on their pass defense. So I'm not as concerned about that as I am the running game with the ability that Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts have to put up big rushing numbers. That Packers, uh, that Packers run defense really has to buckle down and stop the run. Yeah, I like to go into these games as kind of the X factor player, and, and it's going to tie into your key matchup and your points as well. I'm not going to pick this player every single week uh, because it's an obvious choice that he needs to play his best game if the Packers are going to succeed. But I'm in week one. There is no player that needs to show up and will be more important to the Packers winning this game than Jordan Love. It's hands down has to be Jordan Love. And it seems like an obvious answer, but let me explain. He's just coming off of what some experts and analysts are going to say will be a sophomore slump with, you know, we're the last six, seven, eight weeks of the 2023 season of fluke. He goes into the off season, gets paid, becomes tied for the highest paid player in the NFL. They're playing on a Friday night in a foreign country for the first time ever. And there's nobody that's going to not be watching this game. If you're a fan of the NFL, that's prime time. There's no other games on. He has the opportunity to go out there, not only prove that the end of last season wasn't a fluke, but to prove that he, you know, did deserve the contract that he was given. And with this defensive backs to, to exactly to your point, there is going to be opportunity to pick this Eagles team apart. And if Jordan Love can rise to the occasion, take on the moment, this is officially, I mean, a, like this is his team now. Like Rodgers is now two years removed. It's his team. There, he is the X factor. If he goes out there and plays like he played against Dallas, even San Francisco, even, I mean, anybody in that last stretch of games, Packers are winning this game. There is no doubt in my mind. It's been a lot of buildup. It's been a ton of buildup since they lost that game last year to end their season. Uh, a lot of off-season training and getting better. And I just I have full faith that he is going to be the make or break in this game. And we can say that every week because the quarterback is so so important. But there are games where you can get away with a Josh Jacobs or a mediocre passer rating and the defense steps up. This is a game that I'm going to, it might be the only game that I pick this entire season as Jordan Love to be the X factor, but he is the guy. He is hands down the guy that needs to show up and perform. And if he falters at all, this game could get away from him pretty quick. I don't expect it to happen. Let's get to score predictions, game predictions. Eagles enter the matchup as three point favorites. As I said, most of the expert analysts have the Eagles winning 59% of the time. You can change your answer. You can move forward. Don't take any of my hype and excitement and try to not, you know, take that bias out of the equation. Who do you got? What's your prediction? What's your score prediction? So I'm uh, I'm just going to make this easy and I'm just going to remain neutral and say it's going to end in a tie. <laughs> no, right. I'm just kidding. Perfect. That's not. No, I'm not going to do that. I am going to flip flop on my prediction from a couple weeks ago. Okay. Uh I think the co- I think the coaching changes that I wasn't really aware of until tonight. I think that plays a factor. There's going to be some growing pains for this Eagles team. 
Although I do think this Eagles team is going to be very good this year. I wouldn't be surprised if the Packers see them again at some point, whether it be in the playoffs or potentially a championship situation. But uh, but yeah, I can see some growing pains. I can see some rust they have to shake off. And even if that rust only takes a couple drives uh, for them to shake off, Packers may already have a sizable lead at that point. So so I'm going to take the Packers 31, Eagles 28. So close game still, but I know you said the Eagles are three-point favorite, so I have them losing by three. Yep. I'm curious, what was your answer going to be before I blew your fucking mind with knowledge? (laughs) I mean, in 100% honesty, uh, what I have written down here, I have Eagles 31, Packers 28. (laughs) So I basically (laughs) just flipped it. Classic. I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I think no matter what the outcome is, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a good game. It's going to be exciting to watch. And, you know, the the things that you brought to light for me, have changed my mind and i think uh i think packers gonna win this one well there is a there's a lot of games that i I feel very confident in like i kind of go into a matchup and you know you probably have the same thing you're like "Ah, i could go 50 50 or you know who's gonna Mm -hmm. we'll see right you know i reference like my gut instinct of the dallas versus packers game in the playoffs last year like i knew that was a packers victory i knew that the packers were going to go into town and whoop some ass and it was going to be a great time i did not i didn't think it would be as big of an ass whooping as it was but i felt confident enough that the packers would win i'm I'm in that same boat right now call it the hype of the off season that i'm ready for football to start that it's only a few days away or depending on when you watch this a few hours away um I'm that confident with this game. I think that the Packers are ready to continue to go out there, prove who they are, be that team in the NFL. I I have them winning, of course. I have them winning 27 to 20. I think this will come down to a uh, late Philadelphia, probably like a four or five minute Philadelphia gets the ball sort of a situation. They have an opportunity to march down the field and tie the game and uh, the Packers defense and that Jeff Halfley special will will come up and then our defense will win it for us where the Packers get the ball back with about two minutes left and can knee it or, or kind of end it that way. But I see it being a, a good game. Absolutely. These are two playoff teams for sure. I, I have both of these teams making it to the playoffs. I think that the Eagles are probably a 11, 12 win team when everything is said and done. But I think that the mindset of everything I've heard from these interviews between both head coaches, both players, like players on both sides of the the spectrum, I just feel like the Packers are mentally heading into this game with a lot more to prove and a lot more like to show than the Philadelphia Eagles are. So 27-20, I'm locking it in. That's my score prediction. Packers start out 1-0 for all the aforementioned reasons that we brought up before. Se- season starting. We're gonna get some. <laughs> we're gonna, where are you watching the game? You just watching at home? It's game time, baby. I'm probably just watching at home. I don't have any big plans. It's if I don't do a whole lot outside of work and uh, <laughs> taking care of my children. So God, I know I'm. I just have so much going on. Can't keep it, anything straight. No, I'll be watching it at home. I assume. I don't know. Maybe we'll invite some family over. We like to do that. We like to host Packer games, especially uh, night games, because some of my family doesn't have cable or anything like that. So they only get like the Well, it's on Peacock. Oh, is it? Okay. The only way you can watch it is on Peacock. So have fun. Get in your subscription. It's not the only way. Oh, well, you're okay. I see what you're doing there. $8 a month. Cancel anytime. Anyway, we're going to wrap up the first portion of the Packers Just podcast. Just do a plug for Peacock. I know. You're trying to get I, sponsored by I, Peacock well, here? If there's anything, yes. I'll take, I'm groveling at this point. I'll take anything at this. We're going to wrap up the first episode or the first half of the episode. So we got our, our Packers talk. Any, any closing thoughts on, on the game? Or shall, shall we move on to overtime? No, I think we it hit it all. It's just exciting to be here week one. NFL regular season is starting. I'm amped up. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. All right. So for those of you watching the episode, stay tuned for overtime to 
post separately in the next 24 hours. We'll dive into the rest of the NFL schedule and just a bunch of just random conversation that Christian and I like to have typically after we turn off the record button. So thanks again for checking out the podcast. Until next time, we will see you on the internet. Thanks for watching.